please. So good morning, uh, both here in the uh, C Auditorium and out in DCS land. So let me first of all say thank you for taking the time to be here. Uh, you know, this is our attempt to try to um, give the employees of the enterprise an opportunity to touch base with leadership, uh, whether it's on uh, meeting new leaders like we're going to do today, uh, or like we did last month, uh, talking about subject matters. Uh, for example, the mobility uh, capabilities requirement study that Mr. Bussler talked about last time. Or previous to that, what Mr. Scolarici talked about with Turbo Challenge uh, and meeting the senior enlisted leader. So we will continue to do these and provide this, uh, uh, this venue, this opportunity for the, uh, everybody on the team to kind of ask questions, uh, tough questions, softball questions, uh, it's all good, uh, and really to just share information uh, from top to bottom. So today, I've got the, uh, the honor and pleasure of uh, introducing you to our, uh, one of our newest teammates and senior leaders, uh, and that is Ms. Terry Dilley. Ms. Terry Dilley comes to us from uh, the Air Force Audit Agency in San Antonio, uh, and so she's getting used to this Illinois weather, uh, and bought a, bought a new house up in Edwardsville, and so uh, Terry, we're thrilled to have you have you on the team and uh, look forward to, to getting to know you a little bit. Yep, so. Thanks for the opportunity. Absolutely. So I saw somebody was going to clap. You can go ahead and clap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So must, must be appraisal season. So, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so why don't, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of new faces. We turn over about a third of the command every summer, it seems to me. So we've got a lot of folks that are here that may or may not have attended a a transcom show and sort of new faces, so, uh, and you're relatively new, so can you just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of how you, how you got here at Scott Air Force Base? So. Um, very winding path. Um, a career civilian, uh, unusual path for a career civilian. This was my ninth VCS move, starting, including my initial move to my first assignment. Uh, three times in San Antonio, some time in Hawaii, McCord, Washington, D.C., um, both at Andrews and at the Pentagon. Um, but it really afforded me an opportunity to see a lot of breadth and depth of mission. Uh, and, and in that, a lot of opportunities to uh, travel. As auditors, you really get to know um, the entity that you're auditing from, um, from soup to nuts, so to speak, right? So uh, just every assignment just kind of built on the previous one. Um, and then flavoring in some of that, some uh, professional development as well. In mm -hmm. there. Uh, but it's been great in places like Diego Garcia over in uh, the AOR at LUD at Aldafra. Mm -hmm. um, just some great opportunities that help uh, build the understanding and knowledge of the department. Right. Well, I think a perfect example of taking advantage of the opportunities that are afforded to the civilian workforce out there if they choose to do it, right? So some, as you all know, I'm a, I'm a civilian uh, in my other capacity. But uh, some folks, some of our folks like uh, to, they, they got off active duty for a particular reason, and they, they either retired or, or left the active component and took a civil service position, or they, they're, uh, they graduated college and decided they wanted to stay in one area, so, and they've taken opportunities of the local area. But in your case, uh, taking opportunity to use our, our household goods uh, yes. uh, movement, moving uh, uh, processes, you've yes. experienced those before, yes. uh, and really broadened your resume by doing that, and I think that's a perfect example of, uh, of what's out there and what the possibilities are for our, our, our civilian workforce. I think that's a great example. So. I think it's, it's important to not lock yourself into any specific path um, and just know what the opportunities are and be prepared when, they are, where they're, when they're presented, right? right? And certainly then it's always a balance of work and family and, and when you can be mobile, when you can't be mobile and just trying to, to gain breath wherever you are. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, what you been up to since you got here? Uh, drinking from the fire hose <laughs> a lot, learning a lot, um, settling the family in, as you alluded to. Yes, we bought a house up in Edwardsville. I think we're finally settled in there. I think all the pictures are on the walls and the fence is in and the dogs are happy and the husband's happy. So PCS orders are on their way. So now that yes. you're settled. Yeah. Now that so. they're settled. <laughs> Still waiting for vouchers to be settled. But yes, um, you know, the move part of the move is done. It's always good to be past that at home and get the get home life settled into a routine. Um, here, um, assessing. So the commander asked me to kind of do a 60, 90 day assessment of of the J8 and to a certain extent the JDE and TWICF uh, writ large. Um, so I've been working on that, looking at um, 
everything from processes, workforce, uh, health of the health of the fund, um, uh, to kind of formulate a way ahead from there. So also been getting to know the workforce, been doing some one-on-ones, been trying to do some brown bags with my staff, uh, trying to improve communications both internal to J8 and external. So I've been also out trying to build some relationships within the larger comptroller community. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I'll be going to DFAS next week uh, to meet their senior leaders. Right. Um, so doing that and then uh, really just truly trying to work on what, what one of the top priorities that was given to me by General Lyons was to improve transparency of the fund. Um, so we'll assessing that now, working on some of that now, and then more to come on that later. Well, and it's complicated, right? If you haven't worked in a transportation working capital fund organization uh, like me, yeah. right, and you come into an organization like this, trying to understand it and just getting our arms around understanding what that means uh, to the workforce, yeah. making sure the workforce understands yes. it, and what does it mean to the customers and the stakeholders, right? So it's very, very difficult. Uh, as I go back and leave this job and go back to an O&M command, uh, I, I think my, my financial job is going to be much easier uh, uh, because there, it's, it's set, in, set in stone. It's pretty um, uh, uh, black and white, right? So in this world, wow, it's very, very complicated. And so uh, I don't envy your position having to, having to do that to, to educate. Now, of course, you have the advantage of having General Lyons, who was the deputy before and now is back. And, and of course, General um, Broadmeadow is very well versed in, in the Transportation Working Capital Fund. But uh, it's really important that we educate the workforce on what, is that, what does that mean to the average, average person that's working in a working capital fund. So uh, very, very, very difficult. So um, can you share with us some the observations that you've learned so far since um, you've been here? So. so my first observation is J8 rocks, right? I yeah, have I great agree. workforce. Yeah. Um, I have a very motivated workforce, I have a very talented workforce. Um, uh, we've heard General Lyons say frequently how impressed he is by the things this command gets done every day. Um, I echo that for my J8 team. They are awesome, um, the community writ large. The TWICF underpin for fighter readiness, right? So without, without the money, at some point, you can't do the business. Um, and I have a workforce that understands that, and, um, and it's great to see the level of motivation and talent that I have. So first and foremost, um, I would say that was my first observation, mm -hmm. right? Um, next is the TWIC is a very powerful tool. It is an O&M, so, so it'll be easier for you because the rules are set in stone. It'll be harder because you don't have the flexibility and the agility that TWIC yeah. affords you, right? It allows a lot of trade space and a lot of decision space for the commanders in there. Um, I don't think we're doing the best job that we could do in giving him those decisions and trade spaces in there. So um, that was one observation is just to kind of optimize what I call optimizing the TWICF. Um, that means being able to understand it and control it to a certain extent, to be able to ebb and flow your cash flows so that you stay within your limits. Um, to prep for and have some agility in year of execution for those unknown things that we might want to start and take on, um, but also to be able to start planning ahead to the things that we might want to do a year or two out and um, make sure that the funding is there to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really about having that overall financial strategy and knowing how and what you want to optimize in there. And right now we don't have any financial strategy really. Um, we are more, uh, my observation initially is we, we tend to focus more on the execution side than we do the upfront piece. Um, so we'll work, we'll work ahead on that um, uh, uh, as one of the, the bigger observations as I came in here was just lack of funding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know your team's been working really hard on a requirements process, right? So that we're not um, doing things, uh, we're not playing whack-a-mole, I say, yeah. right? So uh, it, things are coming up to us in, in, in consolidated effort across the enterprise, understanding that if I, if I spend money in this particular location, what is that going to do to me over here? And what, is, what right. kind of decisions that faces that give the boss uh, is, with regards to capacity? And I know you guys have been working hard on that, and we're looking yes. forward to running that up through our governance process. Uh, to give us a good strategy on the way forward. So I think that's going to be very helpful for, for the entire team. Yeah, so T-Rock, uh, first T-Rock will happen in August. Yeah, mm -hmm. prepping all the, the heavy lifting is going to be going on over the next couple months to get ready for that. Right. Um, but it is the first piece, really. If you, have, you, if you have a prioritized list of your requirements, you know what your gaps are and how those fill those gaps. Um, it, to a certain extent, makes the resourcing decisions easier. Mm -hmm. right? And I think based on those efforts, the. Um, 
the directors now and the components are really thinking about when they come in for an ask, uh, have they researched it um, within their own directorates and components to be able to come up with the funding to do a zero ba balance transfer of funding uh, so we don't have to go with an unfunded requirement, uh, that, those types of things. So look within, not only on equipment or, or, or um, uh, for contracting, mm -hmm. but also for our civilian personnel workforce. And right. just for everybody's uh, knowledge, uh, General Lyons just recently asked for uh, the fiscal year 18, 19, and, and out uh, growth within the command because he's very concerned and, and conscious about that, that uh, and making sure that we are looking internally first uh, before we decide that we're going to create growth for the enterprise and now have to change you know, things that impact the rates and things like that. So yeah, I think it's going to be very important. I think I saw a hand pop up. Can we get a mic adjustment for Ms. Billy a little bit? It's just a okay. Yeah, just slide it up a little bit. Perfect. Is that better? A little better. Sound good? Okay. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, thanks. All right, great. That, great question, by the way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Midterm appraisals are due on the Act Demo folks, I think. So, yeah, all right. So um, other observations you can think of, things that you're, you're digging into? And, and um, so one of the other things that I was asked to do was look at cost transparency, right? And how transparent are we? Um, we get a lot of questions external to Transcom about how we build our rates and uh, what goes in them and are we, being, are we overcharging the customer in essence, right? Um, I, I think we know a lot actually about ourselves and what our cost drivers are and how we build them and build to make sure that over time um, we, we go to uh, what we call zero net operating results. So, so we're not, ha we don't have gains all the time, right? Um, we're, we're giving those back. At, conversely, you don't have losses all the time either. You don't have money to pay the bills. But um, it, so we know a lot about ourselves. I think our challenges in trying to present that information in a way that resonates to a, a general community. So uh, we will continue to work on that as well. Mm -hmm. um, we will get some financial strategy in place. Uh, I've got a team, uh, and it will be a, a cross-component team. So I've got the component eight uh, and comptroller community coming in next week to start setting uh, the financial strategy document and getting that going, putting the mission and the focus areas in there. Um, and then right now, uh, by necessity, um, in managing our cash balances, we are really looking at our accounts receivable processes. Are we meeting the, the requirements? Uh, we should be receiving in within, a, within six months. Um, at worst, we shouldn't really be carrying receivables older than that. But really getting that down to what I would call a normal business cycle, which you know, a, a normal business, you do business, you would bill within 30 days, you would collect within 30 days. So getting our receivables into a better alignment and then you can control them. If I need to stretch it out because of my cash posture, I can. If I need to collect faster, I can. But, mm -hmm. but just you have to be able to um, get your process to a point where that you can manage them in that way. So those are kind of some of the near-term focus well, and, areas. And when, as your team has done for me over the last two and a half years I've been here and dumbed it down to my level right so I can understand it it's basically how do we have a predictive checkbook right that yes. we can that, that the boss understands exactly what uh, what the capacity he has on a on a really regular basis and understands um, the risks that are out yes. there uh, that and that the, the stuff that your team does to, to to clarify that is absolutely phenomenal and amazing so yeah so uh, after that, so in the, couple, in the fall, kind of what do you what do you see as the major projects um, as we go into the fall? Um, so in the fall, we'll probably uh, head into what I call the flight plans underneath the strategy, and so we'll start doing those activities that work us work towards getting cost transparency. We are going to start taking that to the greater community at the JD Deb in August, most likely, um, and doing some work on the cost side, uh, going after data and data analytics within the eight. We already have some progress made with Cognos. Um, hope to expand that capability to truly put some powerful tools in the hands of my analysts um, in that realm and really make it to where the commanders literally would have a dashboard they could pull up at any time that would, they would know what their status of funds are, mm -hmm. right? So um, we'd spend a lot of time, I will say, managing spreadsheets and PowerPoint slides in the eight and um, I'd like to flip the time a little bit and have more time for my analysts to actually analyze what's in there and less time having to build, build 
communication tools, right? Yeah, because yeah, we're getting ready to sign out the new data uh, and analytics strategy, right, for the boss. Uh, and as a matter of fact, it's, it's making its way up the chain right now, and I think that's going to give the, the whole enterprise some pretty good guidance on the way we want to go with data analytics and, and using that to our advantage. And we've seen that not only in the eight, but we've seen that across the enterprise on just how much more time we can give back to our employees to really think, you know, right. to think and not have to be spending time fat fingering, uh, fat fingering, uh, what you, you good? Yep. Okay. Fat fingering PowerPoint slides, right? So, uh, I, I hadn't prepared you for this question, but uh, just a quick uh, on fire, right? Mm -hmm. and, and where we are, where we are on, on on the fire requirements and things like that. I think we talked about that a lot a couple of years ago when I first got here. It was really high on our, our radar, and I, um, I think it kind of got normalized a little bit. So, can you kind of give us an update on where we are? Um, so, timely question. The auditors are actually on site this week. Um, we uh, have already, they've already given us the intent to discuss. Uh, which means that they can't they can't do the audit in essence is what intent disclaim means um, because we can't give them all of the different populations they require to sample from um, same reason they disclaimed last year um, underneath that though we're doing a lot of work um, to improve our processes uh, we've closed out a fair number of our uh, of our caps basically to fix the notice of findings that they've given us um, and we'll continue to move forward on that. Where I have my team focus this year is getting after what do we need to do to be able to present populations next year so we can get past step one of the audit. Um, and then what are the other big activities we can do that will fix a number of things. So one of the other focus areas for this year will be going after our open document listing and getting that cleaned up. That will actually fix a lot of things for us on fire. Um, we are tied to three different financial systems with Army, Navy, and, and uh, Air Force. Um, that is not going to change anytime soon. So we are tied to the issues that are tied into those financial systems. Yeah. That's a bigger fix and a bigger community fix. All right. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. So I've been on the receiving end uh, from the J8 of some pretty awesome talent with Aaron and Jason when they came up uh, to the third deck. Uh, an example of how we're trying to expand our talent management to give people opportunities to go see some things that they may not have other, otherwise seen had they stayed in their directorate. Um, uh, do you kind of foresee us uh, doing that within the, within the eight uh, um, more, more often? Uh, and can you kind of give us some folks tips on, on how they should, if they, if they have a desire to move up uh, the system and move up and around, uh, how that might go about? Yes, yeah, so we've continued those efforts within the eight. Um, I know I've seen a couple of MOAs just here in the last couple of weeks of folks that we are um, going to go let do some details to broaden their experience. Um, we will continue to look at that. We'll probably formalize the processes a little more within our J8 community and plug into the, the bigger effort for Transcom um, and do uh, and, and do some t uh, talent management within J8 mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. look at what's the right timing uh, we need to be mindful of. We still have a mission to do, so I can't give away everybody at the same time, right? Well, I'm happy to take them. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but I do think that those are important opportunities. And we'll also do some cross uh, training within Jade itself. Uh, very different roles between budget, cost, and, and accounting. Right. And I think it's important for them to understand, for the, for the Jade staff to understand how those interplay with each other. You bet. Don't want to take somebody out too soon, right? You want to give them the, uh, have them become the expert in their field, uh, but then go out and kind of broaden that, uh, that uh, uh, resume a little bit. So, hey, we'll take a little bit of chance to answer any questions that you may have, either here or on DCS. Um, any questions for Ms. Dilly that you want to fire away? They can be about anything. I don't know what kind of uh, football fan is she is, whether she's a cow, you know, Cowboys fan Green coming from Texas. She's a Packers fan. So I grew up in uh, Iowa for okay. four hours All right. from here. So. <laughs> so it's good to be close to home, right? It's good so, to be close yeah, to home. Yeah, this has been great. This is, this is my fifth time here at Scott. And I tell you, every time coming back, it's, it's, it's like coming home. It's a great, great people, uh, awesome, awesome environment to work in. So one question right here. And if you use the mic, I appreciate it. So. Thank you. Perfect. It was good. Oh, yeah. okay. Sounds good. So, Ms. Dilly, I understand you're going to get an awesome TMS briefing at 1030 today. It's going to lay out all the financial, you know, yeah. A to Zs of our prototype. Um, what is your 
perception now of the prototype with respect to financial management? Do you have any perception? Have you heard any anything on the on the uh, street? So for TMS, what TMS will fix for us for audibility and fire is really about um, uh, getting the underlying supporting documentation that we need. That's the start of the transactions. Um, TMS itself right now is built as is, is going ahead and in the prototype is not actually going to do any accounting or do any billing and collecting, but is the foundational piece that we have to get back to an audit to show here's the order, here's where the order came from, have the right documentation to support um, our business. It also has to have a certain level of system controls in it. It's my understanding TMS is going to meet uh, some, not all, as in the prototype anyway of those underlying system controls. And for the audience, TMS, if you're not familiar, is a transportation management system that we've talked about in tr previous Transcom shows in our, and tech talks. Uh, but that, that is very high on the boss's radar and was on General McDews prior to General Lyons arriving. So uh, I see that moving forward pretty, uh, pretty rapidly. So Thank great. You. you bet. Other questions? They can be really hard ones, too. So. Hi, ma'am. Uh, Lance Carpenter from Strategy Shop. Um, your field is one that's pretty uh, well established with some processes that are uh, time tested and everything. I'm just wondering if you have any ideas of where there might be some space for innovation uh, in the J8. Um, I think really in the area of analytics, right? I say innovation, innovation into aid. It may not be new writ large, um, but to the point I talked to earlier about really giving my folks space to think and, and uh, instead of managing spreadsheets, I think we really can push forward in that area. Um, and then beyond that, I think there's some opportunities to, once we understand the TWCF better, to really give the boss um, some trade space in ways that we haven't in the past. Thanks, Lance. Other questions? So, uh, let's see here. We have one on the DTS. It says, U.S. Transcom J8 has unique USA job postings, specifically GS12-15. That is very rare to see. Jobs that promote, I can't read that. Uh, so yeah, it's so, on so on the how screen. we're filling positions within J8, um, we have some direct hiring authorities that we got that last to, I think, 2022 for the FM community that were intended to bring folks into the federal workforce, right? And we have caps on those. Um, and then you also want to go after internal and internal to the federal workforce. So to manage and use the right authorities, we have continuous announcements that are hanging out there so that, so that the external to the to federal government and quite honestly external to the Air Force can apply. The Air Force has put um, in place processes to try to force people to use their DHA, EHA that was given to them, but ours come with certain rule sets that I, I shouldn't be using that. For example, if, this, if the under merit promotion, the selection was an internal candidate, I shouldn't be using my DHA authorities to do that action. Mm -hmm. So we are hanging continuous job announcements out there. That's what the GS 12 to 15 is for. Mm -hmm. And then as we get ready to fill a job, we're hanging an internal announcement for our folks to apply so that depending on where the selection comes down, we're using the right authorities to fill the job. Perfect. Yeah. That's good. So, so how do I convince my uh, daughter, who is uh, getting her master's degree in, in um, biometrical uh, statistics, how do I convince her that she should come into the federal workforce as a young civilian right out of college? Um, I think it's exposing uh, them in a way similar to what industry does. And the Air Force has put PSIP in place to do that, to try to get at some of those folks, and then showing them the mission set. We have such a, a unique mission set, particularly in the Department of Defense, but in some of the other federal agencies as well. Um, and we do a pretty good job of taking care of our employees in terms of benefits. I completely agree. So. So it's, it's, I think it's a, it's a combination of those two. We have a piece up that's coming into the J-8 here this summer, um, and it's like a two-way interview. It's a 12-week interview, both sides, right? We want to convince them that they want to come work for, for the Department of Defense. At the same time, we want to assess that they have the skill set that we need coming mm -hmm. in. Um, so we'll do things to expose them to the mission and make sure they get on the GOC floor and those things because you get very excited when you see the mission. Right. No, I, I completely agree with that. So. Um, speaking of hiring uh, try and trying to make it easier for us to, to bring on the workforce, you know, the RJ1 team and the directors have all been working very, very hard and the hiring authorities 
to uh, work on our DLA pilot program that we're running now. And I think that people are seeing some pretty good success there. Are you seeing that within the J-8 as well? We are. Yeah. So we are um, starting to get our announcements out there. Um, DLA has been very quick to turn things around once we've gotten them to them. Um, we've made some of our first selections. And so looking forward to getting our, our vacancy rate. Great. And the J-1 is always looking for feedback. So from the hiring authorities, those hiring officials that are dealing with, J, uh, with the DLA, team on a regular basis, please continue to give us feedback. So what we want to do is we want to help AFPC, right, the Air Force Personnel Center, get better at what they do, right? And so through this pilot, we're probably going to be able to give them some good, good feedback on, on how to improve processes. So we'll take the last couple of minutes here to answer any more questions that you have. And then I want to give Ms. Dilley an opportunity to offer up any advice that she may have on the civilian civil service career program uh, and how folks can, might be able to to uh, take advantage of great opportunities. So, yes, sir. Hello, ma'am. Uh, Major Aaron Kasparani from uh, J4. Um, obviously, us as Transcom, we, we deal with all of the other COCOMs from a global perspective of, of our Transcom mission. So, as we oftentimes uh, in our interaction with those other COCOMs, maybe they don't see the global focus as much as, as we do, since they're focused on themselves, um, and they should be. What are ways that we can convey some of our, our challenges to appropriately support them uh, from a financial perspective in a way that, that conveys uh, that in a positive way? Thank you. Uh, I think it's understanding the forums that, that we offer to make sure we're bringing them into our forums. And then I think it's also making sure we understand the forums that they're running, right, and, may, and, and sending our folks that direction as well to maximize the existing uh, opportunities that are out there already. Um, and then there's just some one-off relationship building. You know, I think through most people's careers, they understand the value of building relationships. So I will be getting out. I know uh, Mr. Brennan and I will be getting out to the commercial partner side probably late summer uh, to, start, to start doing that as well on the commercial industry side. Um, and, and it's the same thought on that. I know We've done some staff-to-staff -staff visits um, as well from the leadership perspective to try to build those relationships. I think the command will continue to do that. And then it's remembering as a workforce, you represent Transcom every place you go in every forum that you're at. So take those opportunities at your level to build those relationships as well. Yep. Thanks. Any final closing, closing thoughts? Oh, we had a question back here? Yeah. Good morning, Julie Bellamere. I'm the Director of Training Coordinator for J3. Yeah. So J1 is responsible for all the individual training, um, but they only have a pool of TWICIT funds for training. So we have several positions that are funded with O&M, and uh, currently they, the, the money for that is fragmented, so there's no way to really, uh, or it's, there's a great risk that we don't vet the training they do, we don't um, have a chance to assess the return on investment in that training, and, and there's uh, the door is wide open for abuse with O&M funds. So why doesn't J1 have a pool of O&M money that they can use for, uh, for training so that the process works for that way, the same way it does for the TWICA funded personnel? Um, don't have an immediate answer for that, but I will look into it. I would say notionally, yes, we probably relied on, for example, the Air Force career field, career teams have, have training dollars that they can use. Um, we have limited O&M coming into the command, so I will get back with you on that, on response, on what the what's within the realm of possible. Great. Okay. Any final thoughts? Uh, no, no final thoughts uh, other than uh, you asked about you know civilian career yeah. field, whether it's a transition from the military, military or it's a career, uh, career civilian. Um, there's great opportunities. Again, just don't tie yourself into a certain uh, an immediate path. Right? It's not. I'm going to do this job and then this job and this job. You need to know what the opportunities are. You need to know what your peer group looks like and what they're doing for professional development as well as technical development. Um, the higher up the chain you get, the more it matters on the leadership side. So you need to know what that looks like. I would say always know what job you're applying for because you're going to be expected to do the job. It's not a grade and a, and a paycheck. It's a, it's a job. So understand and know uh, what you're applying for. Um, Make sure you have a resume ready to go and practice interviewing so that you're not at the, at the opportunity and when it's there, it's not the first time you're doing it. And I always say, uh, and I always ask this of my, my employees, is give me your five-year plan. 
what, where do you see yourself in five years? Because if you and I hear of something, an opportunity that yeah. comes up, and we know that somebody w would be really interested in that, although it's going to hurt really, it's, it's going to hurt bad that we lose this individual. But why wouldn't we uh, try to help them get where they want to go, right? right. So I, I would encourage you to do that as well. So, well, listen, I, uh, time flies quickly, right? We're already 30 minutes has already gone by pretty quickly. I can't thank you enough for taking the time. Really glad you and, and Bob are on the team. Uh, look forward to uh, to uh, more discussions about the way forward with transparency in the in the J8 and with our transportation working capital fund. Uh, you know, I always like to take the time uh, out to publicly recognize superstars. Uh, and Ms. Dilly and her team have actually uh, given me a few names. So if you're in the audience, please uh, come forward if you don't mind. I know that uh, Vonnie uh, Calgagno is not here. Kurt uh, Freund, is that how you pronounce that? Friend. Friend is, uh, they're not here, but Jessica Kirch and Howard Steffi. Please, if you can come up. Uh, I just want to, yeah, come on up. <clears throat> You've been recognized and, and uh, singled out. Please come over here. Uh, singled out as, oh, for the pictures, because we're going to get a photo. But singled out by your director uh, as superstars. And that, that's a big deal. Uh, that is a huge deal. So uh, thanks for taking the time to do that, first of all, uh, Terry. But uh, on behalf of uh, the nearly 140,000 folks in Transportation Command, I just want to say uh, congratulations and thanks a lot. Uh, on behalf of General Lyons, so thanks a lot. Yeah, you bet. Thanks, thanks and congratulations. You bet. Thank you. Okay, so like we've had a chance to, to meet uh, the senior enlisted leader, uh, we've now met Miss Dilly, and uh, please join us next month when we're going to meet Mr. Brennan, our new director of acquisitions. So uh, thanks for taking the time out to be here and uh, have a safe safe Easter uh, weekend. So thanks a lot. Carry on. Thank you. Appreciate it. Time flies, doesn't it? <laughs>